Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us for today's webinar, Navigating Cyber Risk Market Challenges. Just a couple of quick housekeeping items I want to point out before we get started. Uh, the first is, is if you have any questions during the presentation, please enter them into the Q&A. We'll have time for a couple of questions at the end. And the second is a recording of this webinar will be distributed through email in the next couple of days, so keep an eye on your inbox for that. Next, I'd like to introduce today's presenters. Um, we have our moderator, Tom Collins. Tom is the Director of Enterprise Sales and Marketing for Atlantic Online and has over 25 years of professional experience in the internet service provider industry. Next, we have uh, Evan Tegatoff joining us today. Evan is the Vice President of Solutions Consulting at BitSight. With over 23 years of experience, Evan helps organizations holistically consider cybersecurity, data protection, technology, and business risk as a unified concept. With that, Tom, I'll have you take it away for today's discussion. Great, thank you, Sarah. On our agenda today, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about Atlantic Online and how we came to uh, use the services of BitSight talk a little bit about the current state of cyber risk. Evan and I will have a discussion. I have uh, some questions I'm gonna ask him, which he'll, he'll address. And then we have time at the end for a Q&A. Atlantic Online is a telephone and internet service provider. We're based in the Washington DC metropolitan area. We provide service nationwide. The services that we provide are internet connectivity and phone services. We also own and operate data centers in Silver Spring and Rockville, Maryland, and provide enhanced services such as DDoS protection, structured cabling services, cloud fax services. So Atlantic Online provides uh, so solutions, customized solutions specifically for, for business and government. Um, how we got engaged with, with BitSight, um, it's centered primarily on renewal of our some of our business insurance policies and there's been a greater um, <clears throat> emphasis on ensuring against cyber cyber risk, risk of cybersecurity breaches, uh, ransomware attacks, et cetera. Uh, this generated a lot of interest to us as an ISP and also as a CLEC, uh, as it would apply to many of our clients uh, who are either in our data centers or they're using our internet connectivity or phone services. So we became very interested in, in cyber risk and those that were providing ratings for, for cyber risk. That's how we came across BitSight. Uh, in our own, uh, in our own, in the telecom world, there's a service called Wired Score, which will rate buildings on their fiber connectivity. And this has proven to be a very excellent service for those seeking fiber in, a, in their office building or their, or their workspace. And uh, just how, uh, as Wired Score provides a, a good service, very valuable service, we have found that BitSight provides a very valuable service as well. The way that we use our, our ratings, uh, our BitSight ratings, because we're, we're a subscriber, is first of all, it helps ensure that our public facing IP infrastructure is secure, which is very important because uh, our clients want to have a very trusted carrier who's meeting their needs and using BitSight enables us to uh, validate that <clears throat> for our customers. In addition to that, it helps us monitor our critical ven vendors for their security compliance. Just like every business nowadays, we uh, liberally use cloud-based services such as Salesforce or HubSpot, uh, services such as that or, bill or billing services. Um, and so it's very important that these critical vendors <clears throat> who are part of our operations, that uh, we're, we're sure and that they're validated uh, <clears throat> to be in compliance with our security standards and those uh, uh, across the industry. And uh, what you see here is a, uh, is a graphic provided by BitSight that kind of uh, speaks to uh, how they, you know, how the ratings show, show up in their portal. Uh, Evan will address that a little bit more uh, as we go along here. So the, the current state of, <clears throat> of cyber risk uh, and, and the market challenges uh, related to that is it's so important to have constant monitoring of your security posture. And the reason why is, you know, things change. New threats arise. Also, you, you add vendors or you're changing vendors. Uh, or you're, you're changing markets that you're going into. It's very important to be constantly monitoring uh, 
uh, security posture so that you can then gain knowledge and then take remedial action if required. Uh, we ourselves, when, when we first engaged BitSight, we, you know, discovered some things that needed to be addressed. Uh, and, you know, knowledge, you know, awareness is 90% of the battle because then you can take action once you, you're aware of any, any shortcomings or deficiencies. And obviously this is very important as that now that vendors, partners, customers are all part of your infrastructure, how are you sure that you can trust them? We're using a rating service, uh, a service such as BitSites enables you to, uh, you know, to validate uh, what, what's going on with your customers. I wanna tell a quick couple of stories. We have a, a K through 12 customer uh, that's been a customer of ours for some time. And um, they uh, engaged us over the summer with our DDoS protection service. So we have internet connect, they have internet connectivity with us, also phone service with us. And then they uh, elected to use our DDoS protection service, which was a great idea on their part because the first day of school this year, earlier in September, um, a DDoS uh, attack, um, their, their network became a victim of a DDoS attack. When I say a victim, there was no, um, there was no ramifications of this on their network because they were using our DDS protection service. We were able to mitigate the attack. The thing is the attack happened the first hour, the first day of school, and it went on straight for a week. But our service was mitigating that attack. They never encountered any problems with their network, uh, but through our portal they could they could monitor the status of this they could see it as as it was unfolding but our service was protecting them compare that to what happened the first week of school at the los angeles school district los angeles california not only did a ddos attack happen uh the first week of school but it had a significant impact on their operations where over a half a million students over seventy thousand. uh you know, employees, uh, they had to, um, they, they were unable to use their network. In addition to that, the, the, the perpetrators that were conducting this attack uh, turned this into a ransomware event and that they were asking for money uh, in exchange for releasing the network back to the school district. So this is a tale of two, you know, real life examples of where a, you know, a K through 12 school system in this case had a trusted vendor who had validated and, and highly rated uh, performance when it came to cyber risk that was there to protect them in their time of need. And you compare this to what's happened at Los Angeles where you know, things didn't work out as well. In addition to that, I'm gonna uh, give the mic over to Evan so he can talk a little bit about another current event we had, which had to do with some research, research related to GPS. Maybe Evan, you could uh, uh, talk about this, speak to this last bullet point here. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Tom. And that topic of ransomware has been huge, as, as everybody's probably aware, especially in the last two to three years, the disruption that's been caused by ransomware across uh, organizations, both in the private sector, the public sector, state and local governments, et cetera, has been um, massive. And it's really brought a focus on um, the disruption aspect of third-party risk, uh, whereas previously a lot of the focus used to be on, still is, but, but was more exclusively on things like losing your data um, and more of that compliance impact. But I think disruption is a huge uh, impact area now. So how this relates to some research we recently did um, around uh, GPS. So this was an interesting area that BitSight published security research on. You'll see when I explain BitSight, we collect enormous amounts of data. As a result of collecting that data, we actually identified a vulnerability in a commonly used GPS device for fleet management. So uh, it's the device is, is a Mycotis MV720. Gets installed in a lot of fleet vehicles. It is by a Chinese manufacturer. And it was found to have a very significant vulnerability in it that would allow for remote takeover of the device itself. So the ramifications of this uh, could be beyond just tracking the cars, which cars, vehicles, et cetera, but you also can do fuel cutoff, 
remote control and other aspects on that vehicle. So it brought an even bigger attack surface to bear, uh, a bigger threat to bear in that not only could someone with fairly minimal effort, if this vulnerability was in place, uh, track, but you could stop a vehicle dead in its tracks. You could do a number of things, which there's a, there's a number of scenarios that could relate to this, one of which it, it could become a ransom type situation again, because you could cause a disruption um, on, on you know, a fleet vehicle and then potentially is, uh, depending on what, what uh, nefarious gang is involved, one of their goals might be to, to, you know, to get a ransom for that. So ultimately what we did with this research, we published it. So you can see it on BitSight's website uh, and we shared it with uh, the CISA, so the CISA, the uh, government, U.S. government organization that uh, manages uh, cybersecurity and infrastructure, um, because we felt that there was a, a threat there if the vulnerability wasn't uh, wasn't managed. So really interesting in that it's not only is it a it kind of a ransomware and a disruption play, but it's also people are always talking about Internet of Things and security on devices outside of the typical things we think of, and this was definitely one of those cases. Right on. And this is related to that constant monitoring, for instance, at Atlanta Tech Online, we have a field service technician staff that will go out and do wiring for customers. And just this summer, we've adopted a cloud service to help us keep track of our technicians or the, when they're out in the field. And it would be important to know this kind of data. Don't you agree, Evan, uh, you know, as things change in our operation? Yeah, absolutely. One of the things that organizations look at when they are interested in a security rating solution is that continuous monitoring aspect. Because not only do we collect all this data and ascribe it to IPs and domains on the internet, but every day it gets refreshed. New events come in, the rating gets refreshed, so you can not only see changes in your ratings, but you can dig into specific data points and understand things about your external posture or about malware or, or botnet events happening in your environment by reviewing your security rating and its supporting data. Right on. Uh, I'll also note for our viewers that the BitSight, I have found the BitSight website to be a very inform informative web website. Um, <clears throat> and you know this, this webinar will be posted there. You've done other webinars as well that are there, but there's, it's chock full of information. And I uh, recommend that uh, viewers you know, take time to uh, take a look at your website and uh, hopefully they'll find our, our dialogue today to be informative as well, which I'd like to move move on to. Um, you know, there's a few things I wanted to uh, to talk about with you today, Evan. Uh, first of all, uh, how does BitSight calculate its ratings? You know, how do you come up with these ratings? Yep. Well, that's a million dollar question right there, isn't it? So I'll try to boil this down. And, and the truth is I've worked for a lot of cybersecurity organizations. So I've been in cybersecurity for 20 plus years. And there's always this struggle in explaining what you do when you're in cybersecurity to somebody who's not in cybersecurity. Uh, BitSight is one of the few places I've worked where it is relatively straightforward. And that's actually part of what our mission is. So while I will explain in depth how our ratings are calculated, at a very high level, it's not a difficult concept. So if I'm on an elevator with someone or talking to a neighbor and they say, oh, BitSight, what does BitSight do? I normally start with a fairly simple premise. People understand ratings. They, they might understand their own consumer credit rating. They might also, if they're in the business world, they might understand rating agencies like Moody's, et cetera, that are rating the credit worthiness of an organization. And if you take those two models and apply them to cybersecurity, you've essentially got what BitSight does. So we rate organizations on their cybersecurity performance. We do it in an, a quantitative way. So our rating goes from 250 to 900. Anyone who's checked their own consumer credit rating score might be familiar with that rating uh, range. That's part of, that is why we chose that range because we wanted people to be able to uh, identify with if you're, you know, a 750 plus, you feel like you're doing pretty well, you can get a loan on your car. Well, if you go look at an organization, they look at a 750 plus, 
can feel pretty comfortable that their cybersecurity performance over time is uh, is strong. Right. So the familiarity makes it easier to understand. Right. We we hope so. Yeah. Because the, again, the complexity of cybersecurity can make that difficult to understand. To explain either to upper management or explain. We'll talk a little bit about third party risk in a bit. Explain, for instance, why you may want to do business with this provider and less so this provider because you look at their cybersecurity rating and it looks pretty strong here, giving you confidence. But over here, maybe you see less so. Um, and, and so it gives you that aspect to uh, almost like a consumer report sort of uh, view of, uh, of an organization, but focused on cybersecurity. Now, that said, of course, there is complexity under the covers, so I, I will try not to be too complex here, but what goes into a bit site rating calculation is fundamentally is data. That may almost seem like a cop out, but enormous amounts of data uh, and two main types of data. One is really observable event data. So what we want to review is an organization's performance over time. Much like a credit rating looks at performance over time, that's what we're doing with these events. So for instance, if an organization has a malware event, uh, BitSight will, be, will oftentimes be able to detect that. Now you may be thinking to yourself, how, how the heck could they detect something like that? That's because how is that externally uh, observable? Well, what happens with a lot of malware events is the first thing that they're looking to do is to call back to the attacking entity to the you know nefarious nefarious perpetrator out there um, and we're picking those signals and through our own network infrastructure we're pulling those down ascribing them to source understanding the danger involved etc and then ultimately you know that will hit the rating and for anyone who consumes bitsite uh, ratings they can see the event data associated with that so that's one type of event we have 23 different risk vectors we could spend all day talking about risk vectors, but I'll just leave it at that one type of thing, especially since we're talking about ransomware, malware, et cetera. It's very in line with the type of thing we're talking about today. Right. Now the so other for, type, yeah, sorry yeah, to interrupt, but for no. instance, when we when we first engaged BitSight, one of the things that we discovered was a some some certificates that were out of date and we had to renew them. So you know the that work that you were talking about that you all did collecting that data enabled us to uh, detect that uh, and then remediate it. Yeah, great, great call out time. So what my example, botnets, malware is what we call compromised systems data. So that's one category of our data. You highlighted another area, we call it diligence data. So certificates and web app headers and uh, open ports on firewalls, et cetera are diligence factors that we're looking at at internet scale um, and identifying where organizations are strong or where they could have some improvement. Virtually every organization requires some level of improvement. It's just a matter of you know where they're at and how strong their programs are. So that's really the data set. Well, that's the event data side. So the other side of the data side is we we then map all of these events to organizations using both automated and manual means. We are curating domains and IP addresses into business structures so that when you go into the BitSite rating platform, you can find the company name. And oftentimes, uh, if there are subsidiaries or uh, regional entities, you'll also see a company tree essentially in BitSite where you can select a different entity. So for instance, if you don't want to select Microsoft, you want to select Microsoft Office 365, you could do something along those lines by traversing our tree and finding a rating that way. So um, what we're doing then, so that's, I've covered one, which is collecting data. That's the observable data portion. Number two is research and assign. That's what I just described with the automated and, and human um, mapping curation process. Um, we then boil them the data down into these 23 different risk vectors. They're all weighted by a number of different factors, especially the correlation to breach. Recently, we've been looking at ransomware, which I'll show. And then that weighting system creates a standardized rating for every, so at the level of the risk factors, we call those grades, and they're actually A to F, much like the US school system grades. And then we weight them, and they ultimately, through an algorithm, 
uh, arrive up at that 250 to 900 bit site rating that is the high level uh, rating itself. So that's really uh, number four here. From this information, then we, we compute that overall rating. So it, it, this can start real simple at that top level rating for those who just wanna see where are you and understand that a 750 is good and maybe a 500 is not so great, um, all the way down to a security professional who may be digging into those risk vectors I mentioned and maybe looking at event data. As you mentioned, you know, improve your certificates or uh, change your SSL configs or do something more technical. Right, and I know that we were very pleased that we uh, did, did have a high rating when we first did the assessment, but we did uncover a few things that enable us to improve our rating even more. Um, so it was, it's been a very valuable service. And again, the key, like we talked about earlier, is having this constant monitoring because things uh, will change over time. <clears throat> this um, leads me to another question. So when you're when you're doing these ratings, we've already talked about some shortcomings that come up. What are the most common ones? What are the most common shortcomings that Bit BitSight typically reveals? What are some things our viewers yeah. should be on the lookout for? Yeah, so the most common shortcomings change over time, as you probably can imagine, because there's different events that happen. So. Uh, uh, you know, a major focus on ransomware that has come to light over the last three plus years, I, I would say, has also changed the typical types of shortcomings that we're seeing in organizations. Um, and they lead us to, uh, they led us rather to take a look at ransomware in particular um, so that we could see where, um, where do we see signals across our literally millions of entities that have both ratings and have all this event data relative to the different security areas. So what we did in this study, we have a data science area that does all kinds of things like that behind the scenes, they're the ones who are setting the ratings for our, sorry, setting the, the weighting uh, algorithm relative to our ratings um, and correlating it to, to uh, breach, data breach. And then in this case, we specifically honed in on our population and looked at organizations that had been a ransomware subject. So had, had been uh, subjected to a ransomware attack and started looking at both what their rating was at the time. And also very interestingly, what was their risk vector grades? So we found a strong correlation between a higher rating and a much lower likelihood of having been a victim of, of ransomware. So you can see at the 750 and higher, uh, those organizations were 6.4x less likely to have had a ransomware attack than those who have had their rating fall below 600. So that gave a really good signal. And now if you subscribe to BitSight and you're looking at a third party, you'll see a tile at the top that has uh, where they are relative to this ransomware study uh, and where they are against a correlation to breach. Now to get just slightly technical for a minute, the lower part below the line there is really some interesting things that help to sort of validate what we think relative to the more technical, um, uh, I don't want to say threats, the right word is really the, you know, kind of the avenue of attack that an organization might take to perpetrate ransomware. You mentioned DDoS, which is oftentimes, you know, a, a step towards something worse, ransomware or, or some other further attack. Other areas that we've seen are things like the existence of easily uh, exploitable services being at the perimeter of a network. So remote desktop protocol is a real common one of these. Somebody is remotely allowing access to a desktop um, in the organization or a, a VPN service that's vulnerable. So if you look at the very bottom of the left stack here, it says Pulse Secure Group. There was a fairly well-known vulnerability in Pulse Secure VPN clients that we saw a very close relationship between that and being a ransomware victim, pointing to some of these uh, items that you could see across either your own organization or across your third-party population. 
would give you a feeling of their likelihood um, for, for ransomware. So it's these kinds of risk vector level or the more detailed areas of event details that can be really useful for the more, really for the more technical team at our customers to be identifying, rolling up. And then the nice thing about a ratings platform like this is even for the non-technical, what that technical person can do is do the analysis, identify where this is, leverage our data, sorry, our studies, our data science like this to, to set the right things. And then they can set alerts on these. So just like you mentioned about continuous monitoring, you then now at that point, you don't have to go in to see if one of your third parties has fallen below one of these. You can actually set an alert on it and then it'll alert you. And now you can kind of go in and take a look and say that there might be something here of, of interest. Right on. And, uh, you know, these these risk vectors, it certainly makes a lot of sense if your configuration grade is C or lower. Uh, it's a greater uh, risk than if just your certifications grade is, is C or lower. So that certainly makes sense. And one of the things that really impressed me about my view of the, the portal with all the information was the level of detail on on these these type of things. And it, and it per pertained to me as well because I – uh, at our company, I help maintain our public website, and you know we did have to uh, bring like uh, t uh, some of our TLS uh, settings up to up to the sort of the level that uh, BitSight was looking for, which does lead to another question. Um, so, how does BitSight help validate the security of critical third parties? So, you know, Atlantic Online. You know, we, we were validating ourselves, but like I said before, we use many different cloud services. How does BitSight help validate the security of these critical yeah. third parties that so many people are using? Yeah, yeah, great question. And it's really, you know, when you look at the use cases for BitSight, they're, they're all related to one another, as you can imagine. But um, so we have what we call security performance management, which is really looking at the rating for your own security improvements, which you, you gave a couple of examples from your own experience there, you know, looking at certificates, con configurations, things like that, improving your own internal security program and controls because you get this external view on it. So we call that security performance management. Then we also have our cyber insurance use case, which I think you mentioned beforehand, maybe not here, but you and I have talked before, and you mentioned a, a bit of that cyber insurance use case there. Um, because cyber insurers are looking for data and over 50% of the policies underwritten in the cybersecurity industry have been using BitSight data to make some amount of those underwriting decisions and to determine loss control. Yeah, so, and what, something I'd interject there, what's so important about these ratings and doing well in them is you can actually uh, get savings by, by uh, uh, having a high score, you know, doing well in this area. So, yep. you know, yeah. there's real tan tangible results from this, not only being more secure, but, you know, potentially cost savings as well. Yeah, good point, Tom. Yeah. And and then to relate to this last uh, use case here that I'll go into more in depth is really about about third parties. So if you think about the rating and its useful usefulness to your own organization and then also for, you know, cyber insurance to be making good determinations on performance, um, you also almost Every organization today, I would even go on a limb and say every organization today is doing some work with some sort of third party. No one's going alone today. They have SaaS vendors, service providers. They use Elantac probably for uh, for a number of things. You know, um, BitSight is hosted on AWS. You know, I mean, everyone has third party risk management exposure. And so the trick with that is that the traditional methods of third party risk management sometimes haven't been built for uh, continuous monitoring, which you already top, touched on. So, you know, do, assessing your third party once a year or when you contract with them doesn't give you a good feeling for how they might be doing at any given point in time. Um, and it, it, it can be really uh, time consuming to go through sending a security questionnaire to a third party, uh, getting a feeling for their posture back, maybe reading their SOC 2, all these things. By the way, still important parts of third-party risk, but can really be made much more efficient and much you can have much higher confidence by bringing a security rating solution to bear. So at BitSight, we really break down third-party risk management by three jobs. We call them jobs. If anyone has ever read the jobs to be done literature written by uh, 
the author escapes me now, but uh, anybody who knows it, there's a whole cult around jobs to be done. So anyone who's out there talking about jobs to be done, this is what we call our jobs to be done with, with BitSight. So the first job is vendor validation. So within third-party risk, against the, the trick it oftentimes is if you're using a questionnaire approach to third-party risk, sometimes it's, you get back responses. Do, do you have firewall controls? Yes, we have firewall controls. Do you have a firewall standard? Yes, we have a firewall standard. Well, how do you validate that? So BitSight can really provide a strong validation through the data that we provide on the platform mapped to those kinds of control areas. So you can really have a, either a greater level of confidence if they have a strong BitSight rating and strong risk vectors in that area, or on the contrary, sometimes you can expose different areas that you know the third party isn't as open to you by showing them some data that might still need to be rectified in order to validate their, their posture. So that's vendor validation. Uh, continuous monitoring, we talked about this a lot. I think typically a lot of people come to BitSight right away with their first thought of their job in mind is continuous monitoring because there are so few things out there that can uh, continuously monitor third parties. So uh, this is you know monitoring both issues as they occur. We're constantly updating the platform with new intelligence for different types of uh, attacks. You know, uh, going back a year and a half or so ago, there were solar winds, there was Kaseya, there were Microsoft Exchange vulnerabilities that were proliferating. We're constantly building those into the platform for things like zero days so that right on the back end of that, you can monitor and see what's going on. And then setting alerts that I mentioned before, because th there's certainly active monitoring to be done on the BitSight platform, but just as important, if not more so, for busy people who have many other things to do. You set alert triggers on various different risk vector levels or rating grade change, or if the rating drops by five points, let me know. And that way you have a continuous monitoring that's actually manageable. And then last, the last job to be done is assurance, which uh, you can break this down into reporting at various different levels of the organization. At one level, BitSight allows you to report up to other areas of the organization that maybe don't understand cybersecurity because now you can report it up in a quantitative manner. Um, and you can also do portfolio level reporting across your third parties, whereas you know previously organizations have told us they struggle with that a lot because it's very difficult to get that big picture on hundreds of vendors or we even, we even have customers with thousands of vendors. And I think we've even got a couple with tens of thousands of vendors. And there's virtually no way to do that unless you can do it at scale with something like right a BitSight on. ratings platform. Right on. We, uh, you know, I've asked you some questions. We've had a few questions that have come in here. Uh, thus far, uh, one of them is, what is the typical bit site score improvement that organizations obtain after subscribing to the bit site service? That's a great question. And it's also one of those questions that's great, but hard to answer. So, <laughs> but, but I love talking about it because you think about the fact that we have 23 different risk vectors. There's a lot of different paths to improvement, right? So it's very common that organizations will uh, come to BitSight through a couple of different avenues. Cyber insurance could be one of them. So their cyber insurer makes them aware of BitSight ratings and that there's something good in their posture and performance and some bad things. Third-party risk is another place it could come to bear. You know, you're, you're in a contracting uh, mode and somebody comes to you and says, hey, there's this element of your security rating in BitSight that we'd like to see improved. But one thing to know about security rate, BitSight security ratings, and this is somewhat unique to us. We, we developed the industry and so we developed an approach that we think is the solid approach to ratings, which is you want to be able to identify security performance over time. Now, what, is that, what does that mean? Uh, going back to the kind of the credit rating analogy, if you, Tom, were, uh, you know, not that you would ever do this, if you faulted on your mortgage, you missed your car payment two times, et cetera, um, and then you know you've got to go and uh, you're looking to get financing on a boat, right? Uh, you go there, so the day before you're like, well, I better true up all my car payments, make sure I'm paid up on my mortgage. Well, does your credit score bounce? immediately show that do, do you know tom no, how does no, that work it, no it wouldn't and uh and that also does lend itself to another question we came in is what is the typical time period that it yeah, takes yeah. 
bring your score up. Yeah, so I'm kind of I'm kind of getting there, but thank you. Yeah. So and, and by the way, I know you have excellent credit, so I was only asking you to to suggest for other people, but you'll get you'll get that boat. But uh, right. but you thank get you. the idea. Is if you're a third party looking at um, if you're looking at a third party rating, you want to know what has their been their performance over time. Because in our context, sure, if they went and trued up everything on the firewall today, uh, you know, made sure they didn't have any infections in their environment, that's great for you to know. But maybe they just did that because they want to contract with you. It's much better for you to be able to see their history and see where is their rating and how has it been reflected over time so that you can get a feeling of their overall performance. So because of that, we have – and this can sometimes be um, – a point of challenge that we have to explain to customers, which is we are looking at some of these events over sometimes a 60 to 90 day time frame. Now, when something is fixed, it does get reflected on the portal at the event level. So you can see those fixes. However, the rating may not immediately bounce back. And that's because we are using a rating algorithm, much like I explained, so that you can identify what that performance of that organization is over time. Excellent. The uh, and uh, makes a lot of sense. And I and, you know, I love the way that you've uh, kind of tied this to the credit score uh, process because it, it does help understanding. And certainly, don't you think this lack of understanding that's out there uh, might result in a lack of adoption by people of cybersecurity protections? Don't you think that lack of understanding uh, might create fear, which you know I kind of, can kind of paralyze people in the yeah. marketplace. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I think it's improved over the last, I'd say, five years even, but there's still some of the struggle to explain it in that more business context, because that's really when people start to understand cybersecurity is when they can relate it to business context. <clears throat> and since I've been in this industry for 20 plus years, uh, it has been a struggle for, I would say, at least 15 of those 20 plus years. Um, I would like to think part of the reason I came to BitSight was because I wanted to get into an area of cybersecurity that was much less technical and much more risk based. And I really believed that things like BitSight ratings can help to uh, increase the awareness at boards and other levels about uh, cybersecurity by trying to put it in terms that people can understand even if they don't know what a botnet is or what the MyCODIS GPS tracker is and why, you know, attacking it, you know, is a bad thing, you know. 